Hey everyone, well we've got a 2338 today and this one is a little bit different. It's not booting to the OS. Uh, basically you put power into it, it comes up and then it wants to restore and then it restarts and so on and so forth. So it might just be a corrupt file system, it might be something electronic. I guess I'll have to pop it open and have a look and see what we can find. Where he's not a great fan of these sort of jobs because sometimes it can end up being a bridge across the two domains of fault. So you could have a hardware fault and you can have a software or operating system fault. Some, some machines just get sent to me by other businesses without a lot of clarification. Okay, looks like it's been disassembled to some degree. Not really sure what I'm chasing here. Try and boot it. Doesn't seem to have any inclination to charge. Disconnect the battery and see what the behavior is then. Same business, same pattern. Right, let's get the board out. We'll try it in another chassis, see if that helps. That'd be my first estimate on what to try. See if we get any change of behavior by just plugging it in like this. Alright, still doing a boot loop of some sort. Let's see if we get any rails coming up. Uh, nothing activating here. This might be battery related, as in battery sensing related. I just don't know. There's nothing showing up on the board notably visibly. Still doing the same thing, eh? Hmm, interesting. Even trying to do start op startup options, it fails. Definitely something squirrely there. Alright, well, it's not the chassis. Well, with this sort of behavior, I'll be thinking maybe something wrong with the NAND themselves, or the NAND's not being detected, and all that. Um, yeah, this is, this is an interesting one. Well, that looks like a hot spot right there, and that looks like a speaker amp. Yep, speaker amp. Interesting. Speaker amp or speaker cap? It's definitely coming from this area. Guess we'll give it a little bit of IPA and see what warms up. Yep, there we go. There's Fizzy. So who's actually fizzing? It's funny, I think it actually just cleared itself. Alright, right here. Well, um, we don't have the short anymore, but I'm going to guess that third ball from the right, the one that I'm lining up between the two caps, that looks sus. Compare it to this one. Big difference between that one and that one. Yeah, we can see little specks and specks of trash down there. Let's get that cleaned up. Well, those pads at least are looking good. Now we need to get a replacement chip. Just put a little bit of flux on those pads to stop them getting too oxidized while we go about looking for a chip. Uh, if we have a look at what those chips are, what have we got? It was this one here, UR630, and your pretty classic TAS5770. Here we go, we've got one here, we'll grab that one. Small touch of flux. Yeah, might have been smart to hold the chip. 
and we just clean up those pads with some leaded solder oh, I've got my classic preferred stencil here no, not that one there we go nice now we need some paste ok we've got our blob of paste now let's see we'll just drive off some of the flux and then that should last us a couple of weeks it's going to be a little bit wet for this first time around but long term it will be good as you can see this is going to be an absolutely massive amount of flux uh, paste <laughs> yeah, that was a little too much alright that's good we're doing 270 and 15% air here. It really does not take much with these chips. And you can pretty much just go straight in on them. This should be good. We're going to give this uh, reflow for a little bit of flux. Ah, way too much there again. Okay, that's plenty on the chip. We're just reflowing it just to make sure that the balls are centered and sitting down properly. Again, 270, more than ample. There we go. It looks like they were pretty good, but better to be safe than sorry. Okay, the orientation should be the same as this one. If we go to the board view, we can see indeed that is the case. Pin one there, pin one there, and we can see up here in that corner of the board. Alright, protection's back on. Now we're doing 450 again, but this time it's only at 30% air. We really don't need a lot of air. And this is leaded solder, so it's going to drop a lot quicker. Now it should pull it slightly up, I think. Yep, there it goes, slightly up. That does not feel like it's sat down properly. We'll have a look at it at the edge and see what it looks like. But it didn't quite feel like it had a proper settle down. Yeah, it, it needs to come down ever so slightly at the back. There's a very subtle tilt, I think. It's not much. But it would feel better. I mean, the pads themselves have actually reflowed. It's just that they haven't sort of given their nice little pancaking against my own preference I'm going to give a smidge of flux at the back uh, it's definitely good now I can see that they've pancaked better now so I'm happy <sighs> I'm really not feeling like doing repairs today, but job's a job, you got to get it done. Alright Paul, I think it's time to walk away from this. It's pinked at our part. Already much better. There, yeah, there we go, one amp current. But it's still restarting. Current's better, and it's charging. It's, okay, that wasn't a restart. That was, what have we got here? Authentication is required to verify startup disk. Uh, maybe we cancel that. Authenticate or select another startup disk. Okay. Delightful. Fruit. Fantastic. Guess what? No password. I need the password for this Tony laptop. 
All right, there we have it. Amazingly lucky. This one came back and thankfully there was no data loss. Ah. Okay, so we had another successful repair. That was very lucky actually. I genuinely thought at the start that we were not going to have, even if we could repair it, that we weren't going to get some sort of any kind of data recovery from it because it was in the recovery state and doing a constant loop which often is an indication there's a problem with the NANs, the SSD, things like that. So it goes to show, you know, sometimes if you just look around, maybe it's something rather unrelated, like I would not have actually thought that the speaker amp would cause that sort of behavior. Now, when I looked at the schematics, I could see that the lines that were shorted was this PP bus speaker amp left current sense line now that is actually just PV bus A on so it's the main line and it's understandable if you short the main line that it will have issues but I don't normally expect it to power through and then reboot power through and then reboot so this would have been a marginal one and I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't get a chance to test the resistance before I found it and played around with it so this is a good example that sometimes you should test these values before you go ahead and start messing around with them because now I don't have a reference so I don't know what could be an indicator for a future situation where this occurs. It is interesting that we are regularly seeing speaker amp areas being culprits and I think part of that is because of the fact that they do have the main PP bus going into them and so therefore it does tend to make them a little bit susceptible to if there's damage there then they're going to cause system-wide issues. After putting in the customer's information a couple of times passwords this booted back to their full original system so again I wasn't expecting that I had thought that someone maybe had already tried to um, reformat the machine things like that so again a good indication of don't go for the big reformats or the big factory resets until you've cleared up everything else so you never know it, it could be a case like this where the data was actually all still there and ready to go just had to have that little bit of a soft short removed from the speaker amp Sorry it's not too much of a video today, sorry I'm not really lively today, just not feeling it. Some days you get that, and this is one of those days where I'm just not into it. So thank you all for watching, I'll see you on the next video. Until then, you'll take care, I'll catch you later.